Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160, and it's Friday, which means that uh, you're happier than you are on Thursday and Wednesday and Tuesday. What do you think about the draft? I think the draft, you know, the NFL, let me just give you my perspective, folks. The NFL is a brand, and they do it well. They know how to brand, they know how to promote the brand, they know how to de- defend and protect the brand. It's about the brand. And nobody does it better than the NFL. You're talking like last night, and I watch NFL Network report on the draft because I like Deion Sanders. I like I, Rich Eisen. I like Mike Irvin. I like uh, uh, the former San Francisco 49ers coach, Mooch. I mean, I just I love that network. But I'm going to tell you something. The colors, you know, NFL, you know, their, their, their label, their logo everywhere. They, like uh, Brad Amster just said, it's like watching 30 people win the lottery one after the other. And last night they did it smart. And I'll guarantee you the NFL told the ownership, say, listen, let's not mess around here. When you know your pick is, get it in here so we can make this thing fast moving. That was brilliant. That was smart. I mean, it was fast-paced. Uh, you had trades, but it, everything still went quick. And they bring on the military. They line them up on the stage, and they honor them. I mean, they just do everything right. And then Roger Goodell, you know, he's hugging all of them. Like he's doing hand signals with them. I mean, you know, he. I'm telling you, it was awesome. Now, relative to the Bengals, great draft. I mean, let's face it, it is a passing league, as they say now. You need uh, secondary players that can play the ball, that can, you know, keep up with these receivers that's out there. And this uh, Drake Kirkpatrick from Alabama is a great cornerback. And you know what? If you're going to draft a cornerback or any player, why not draft from the champion NCAA that plays in the SEC? They're playing at a high level already. And, and by the way, this was the Carson Palmer pick, of course. And then number 27, Kevin Zeitler of Wisconsin, he's a road grader. I mean, what a great pick, you know, for your offensive line. So, And they traded down and got another pick in the third round from New England in doing that because they, they could have got their guy at 27. They didn't need 21. My Cowboys, smart move gave up a second-round draft choice to move up to make sure they got the best cornerback, even better than Kirkpatrick, Morse Claiborne from LSU, a quote-unquote shutdown corner. And, of course, the Bengals picked up Terrence Newman, who was the starter for the Dallas, so they needed a cornerback. But uh, interesting, Andrew Luck going to Sanford, or excuse me, going to uh, from Sanford, going to Indianapolis. Redskins, Robert Griffin III, what an exciting player he is. Our Cleveland Browns, Trent Richardson from Alabama, trying to get a running game going. But uh, the draft is all, and also last night, two game sevens, old-time hockey. Rangers beat the Senators, Devils beat the Panthers. And it's just funny, TC. I asked. This on old-time hockey. You're it's saving that for you for today. Thank you. Can you play that again? Old-time hockey? Piss on old-time <laughs> hockey! You're doing it! Eddie Shore, old-time hockey. I early because when Rob wakes up, what did I hear on the radio? That is awesome. That's Friday bit for you. We never heard that. Let me, let me, I got to tell all my son and my stepson, Parker and Cameron, who work for me. And because of their sleep schedules, uh, I don't make them get up too early. So, And it's also kind of nice. when they, If they got there early at the office... I wouldn't be ready for them. So they get to sleep in a little bit. They don't start their day till 11, and they do all the running and uh, deliveries and whatnot at the law office. I told them both. Now, my son is a big football fan. My stepson is a big hockey fan. And I said, guys, why don't you come in and spend – just get there at 8.30. I said, I'll get – Parker, you can be my draft expert. Cameron, you can be my old-time hockey expert. And I said, we'll talk about these things and we'll have fun. Also, they're both single. So I said, I'll announce on the radio any Bulldog Nation mothers that you have a uh, nice daughter 
that you'd like to have a, a handsome, nice young man. I got two of them, eligible bachelors in my household. Now, why are you trying to give them away? Now, here's what's so funny, TC. <laughs> they can't get up to get here by 830. Uh, okay. You're talking about a farm boy that got up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> Still does. But they cannot get up and get here by 830. Well, I don't know. We also have a pleasant surprise, hopefully. Molly, who is a member of the Bulldog Nation team, uh-huh. uh, the vice president of our sales. Uh, and I want to tell you right now, she claims that she'd like to come to the studio this morning. And we'll see if she's got the guts to come in here. Of course, we're going <laughs> to violate the rule. Why sleeping right now? You know, we might get in trouble later. Uh, what do you think, TC? Why do, men, why do we do these things, TC? Why do we do things we know we're going to get in trouble for? The answer is no judgment. That's <sighs> it. Every bad decision is based on poor judgment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad always says you can't teach judgment. You either I, have it or you don't. And you can't fix stupid. Is having Molly on stupid? No, I don't think so. I've never seen Molly. I don't know. No, she never <laughs> Brad just said, no, no, it's not stupid. <laughs> you see, you have to look at it this way. Is it good programming? I mean, do the listeners want to enjoy having a guest in the oh, studio like that? Oh, okay. yes. They'll enjoy Molly. Then it's well worth it. Everything for the show. TC, I just want to start off, you know, strong today in this first segment. You know, you and I talk all the time. It's important to have a good segment. And um, I got a joke that uh, I'm just going to just throw out there. All right. Now, ladies, it's just a joke. <laughs> All right. A, a disclaimer a girl- before the joke. Now. <laughs> <laughs> a girl is standing at checkout line at Kroger. She has the usual stuff, milk, bread and butter. A drunk guy is standing behind her holding a 12-pack of bush beer. He pipes up. Excuse me. But you must be single. She looks at her things and says, Well, yes, I am single. How could you tell? Because you're ugly. Wow, that was just harsh. None of the characters want to laugh at that. <laughs> For the first time, none of our automated laugh tracks are, are won't even laugh at our joke. Like, oh, hey, hey, that joke, Whoa. that joke is like one of those Johnny Carson moments where something falls flat and he raises his eyebrows and, and the audience loses. And the audience laughs. I told that joke knowing that everybody would laugh how bad it was. It worked. Now, I want to tell you something. Here is what happened. William gave us a lousy joke today. So Sarah and I were scrambling for a backup joke. So we... So, so we gave we gave the American jury a backup joke that was as bad as the first joke. But we, died, yeah. we, we were desperate. I guess so. The, I back, mean, the backup that, joke. That, that wasn't even a Hail Mary. <laughs> oh, I'm cracking myself up. That's, all right, I got one for you. Maybe we might redeem ourselves here. Go, TC, help me out. All right. A penguin walks into a bar. The bartender says, can I help you? The penguin says, I'm looking for my brother. Have you seen him? The bartender says, I don't know. What's he look like? <laughs> That's about all we have going for us right now. Don't we we? Know, you know what we need? We need a joke that old-time hockey can appreciate. <laughs> By the way, I just want to tell everybody. This is the last day of old time hockey. We've ran with this for three days, and and we we just have to use it up and, before Rob Williams, our program director, yeah, gets out of his Before Rob Williams calls and says, "Will you guys get off old time hockey?" <laughs> Everybody's seen the movie Slapshot. You know that scene, man. Hanson <laughs> Brothers in the locker room. The owners yelling at them all. Old time hockey. <laughs> and you know, um, uh, I got another clip. Chuck sent me another clip. Uh, it was like a, a, the tribute clip, okay? It's about a minute long. It's just music playing and just shots or scenes of them. <laughs> It is a f- that that one minute right there is the funniest bit. Just to see it is. on the, you know on the ice. <laughs> it is, and I got a show and tell. The newest issue of Maxim Magazine came in. 
Yes, it did. And I haven't opened it up to look to see what fun things are inside. So Articles. We'll cover that in pop culture. When we come back, we're going to give you some more old-time hockey. And no more, and no more bad jokes on Real Talk 1160. <laughs> Make sure you stick around at 728 this morning for Bill O'Reilly's Talking Points right here on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to old-time Bulldog. (laughs) (laughs) Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Hey, uh, you know, sometimes you ought to just quit instead of digging a deeper hole, but I'm going to try to dig a deeper hole here. All right, we'll see if we can get somebody to Maxim Magazine has a joke. Oh, okay. Yeah, here it goes. (laughs) Uh, this is the cleanest one they got. It's the only one I can use, and I got to rework a little bit. My friend told me he had sex with his girlfriend and her twin. I asked him how he could tell them apart. He said her brother has a mustache. <laughs> oh, ouch! <laughs> can we go back to old time hockey? <laughs> Let's go back to pop culture, shall we? That's not a bad pop idea. culture. That's... Here we go. On June fourteenth, just two days after. George Herbert Walker Bush celebrates his 88th birthday. The HBO documentary 41 will debut. How you like that? He's getting his own move. Jimmy Kimmel's going to host a White House Correspondents' Dinner Saturday night. Boy, they love him, don't they? Yeah, and that's always funny. Yeah, yeah. The White House Correspondents' Dinner. Barack Obama will get to tell some jokes himself about Mitt Romney. Last year, it was about <laughs> Donald Trump. I made Trump leave the room. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be a sequel to Top Gun. Really? Jerry Bruckheimer's going to produce it. Cruz is going to be in it. Shouldn't he have been retired by now? I would think From so. the military? You know, that's been a long time. It's like, <laughs> I guess he's going to be an instructor. You watch. He'll be an instructor oh, yeah. there now. Training the young guy. I wonder if that actress is going to be in there. Oh, Kelly McGillis? Oh, oh. They probably say, oh, you don't look good enough anymore. Uh, sorry. New, new, new woman. We'll call you. Lindsay Lohan, who we thought was going to turn her life around, and Bulldog Nation member Amy said, yeah, right, showed up three hours late, acted like she didn't want to work, and kept disappearing on the set of Glee. Oh, I mean, come on, Lindsay. <sighs> what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know about her. I mean, it's just terrible. And how about this woman <laughs> uh, named Madeline Starkey that took a picture of make, her making a face? Uh, out in Boulder when <laughs> she saw the president standing next to him and she's making a face. It's kind of gone viral. It's pretty popular. <laughs> that. Did you see that? Ah, <laughs> it's like, what, did he, did he goose her or something? What, I mean, what, what was she doing? <laughs> I got a story you might like. I don't know if this is pop culture, but it has to do with the king of pop, Michael Jackson. An Idaho man has been charged with assault after authorities say that he ordered another man to perform the moonwalk at gunpoint. <laughs> Oh my! I I want to see that moonwalk, and I want to see it now. Look, I believe it's pronounced the Cordeline Press. Cordeline Press reports 30-year-old John Ernest Cross has been charged with felony. Uh, for the police say that uh, Cross, uh, from his home, held the you know shot or held the rifle to this man and told him to dance and do the moonwalk. It was a semi-automatic rifle. Now this guy's response: he's supposed to re- appear in court. He says the firearm was just a pellet gun. Like, Unbelievable. Like that makes a, what possesses a person to make another person want to do the moonwalk at gunpoint? That's point? messed up. I mean, it's not funny, but it is. I think it's funny. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I think of all the things I would want somebody to do at gunpoint. You know, you know that, moonwalking is not one of them. Oh, I got the gun here. I do the moonwalk. <laughs> I do it good. <laughs> it was that drunk with the six packs that you guys watch this. You want to see me make this guy moonwalk? Interesting day in history. In 1805, the Marines attacked the shores of Tripoli. And Gomer Pyle had a song he could sing. Yeah. 1861, Abraham Lincoln suspended the writ of habeas corpus. For those non-legal scholars, habeas corpus is the uh, power, not the power, but the right that you have to find out what you're being charged for and why if you're in prison. And it allows you to get in front of a judge. Abraham Lincoln suspended that. He's been attacked by civil liberty groups for that. But Abraham Lincoln said, you know what? I got to do it or I gotta, I can't save the union. <laughs> he was right. Uh, 1937, the first Social Security payments was made, and they've been being made ever since, and we're broke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and birthdays today, we have two, just two that are worth mentioning. Casey Kasem is 80. 
today? 80. Casey Kasem. Casey's top 80. And since uh, Dick Clark died, Casey Kasem's the king, right? I guess he is. He's now the oldest teenager. And Ulysses S. Grant. We don't know how old he would have been, but it's his birthday today as well. A little older than Casey. A little older than Casey Kasem. You know, I talked to Casey on the phone once. Keep reaching for the stars with your feet on the ground, or however he said it. I was actually imitating Casey Kasem while he was on hold once. Imitate him. Hi, this is Casey Caseman, Hollywood. We're up to the number one talk show host in America. It's the Bulldog. Thanks for your request. <laughs> and now back to the Hey, countdown. Hey, Casey, can you say old-time hockey? <laughs> this on old-time hockey. <laughs> Rob's still in the shower. <laughs> And they said, Casey heard that. Casey was listening to you. And he goes, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's funny. Has Has Sammy Davis Jr. ever listened to you? <laughs> I, we had to pull Sammy out a little bit. Casey and Sammy. Get yeah, I know. Well, you know. Shakespeare, Shakespeare for your day. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. They kill us for their sport. That's pretty good. Ouch. That's ouch, but I like that. Wow. You can find that on my newsletter and blog. And some local news. We got to get local news. Get this. Hamilton County property record show Jim Tarbell recently spent 255000 for two Jackson Street buildings right near one of the proposed streetcar stops. No way. And, are, uh, and he, he's actually on the streetcar board. <laughs> I mean, I mean, can you believe this? Maybe we can do a remote from his new property rather than from the studio. Jim, 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 Jim. What are you doing? And Villa Hills Mayor Michael Martin was accused of burning city documents. When you're under investigation and there's lawsuits pending, you might not say, hey, let's have a bonfire and burn these documents. <laughs> then again, though, wait a minute. We don't know. It might have been a good thing for Mike Martin to burn the documents. Maybe, yeah. We don't know what the – if he burned the documents, they might have been important to burn. There, there might have been a reason. It wasn't an oops moment. You know something? I, I'm going to remain uh, fair, partial, and neutral in this situation, but, you know, they've been having that lover spat in Villa Hills for a couple of years now. Oh, my God. It goes on and on. And you know what? No matter what anybody ever says about these spats in these little cities, yeah. it's all about who's in control. Yeah. Who has the power of that city? Ooh, you control Villa Hills. Boy, yeah. you're a big dog. <laughs> Independence went through it for years, fighting over who controls Independence. Ooh, wow, man. You're a big, important person, man. You run Independence. Boss Hog. <laughs> sorry, Judge Rees. There will not be a jail over here. I'm sorry. I mean, my goodness. Uh, Kentucky Supreme Court has ruled that students can keep guns in their glove compartments on campus. Uh... I want to get back to you on that one. All right. Uh, let me see. Ray Malaluga settled his case. He must have really did hit that bartender <laughs> because he settled the case. They went to mediation. He yeah. paid yeah. some money. You don't pay money if, you don't, if you're not guilty, you know. And he still might get disciplined by the NFL. That's right. Let's go to sports now. The Cincinnati Reds. Come on, Marshall. We didn't bring you in here to blow games. They lose 6-5. to five. Uh, in the ninth inning. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Nick Massett is going to remain on the DL. The Reds play the Astros at 7-10 tonight. We've already covered old-time hockey and the draft. <laughs> and what else do you need? Oh, the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl may be suspended. I say, who needs the Pro Bowl? Get rid of it. The players aren't going to be mad. This is the Bulldog. Old-time hockey on Real Talk 1160. <laughs> Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. My wife took Riley, my granddaughter, to the zoo yesterday, and they saw the new baby camel. There's Aww. a new baby camel born. Really? Riley got to see the new baby camel. Now, how'd she react to that? I got, got kind of, you know, complained to because I didn't go to. Ah, oh, see, you should have gone, you know. I didn't want to see the camel. <laughs> I don't care about the baby camel. You know, but it's not about, you know, as parents I talk about us. You got to watch the kids' experience, I that kind of thing, know. you know? There was a whole crowd that went, I would have just been another person. <laughs> Every day. Hey, Rick and Smokey. Hey, how's it going? Do you ca- here, too. Do you, who's there, too? Oh, this is Rick. Do you guys care about the baby camel at the zoo? No, why? <laughs> There's no punch there. What happened? Camel toe. <laughs> okay. All right. 
What's going on with what's going on today's hardware this week? We're selling all kinds of fertilizers still and weed killers and wonderful stuff like that for your yard. Fertilol is great stuff. It's a commercial product that all the Ace Hardware is brought in. High yield, great insecticides, herbicides. And it's time to get your second step put down and uh, get rid of all those dandelions. You know what, guys? My grass at home, my yard needs i haven't taken care of it good enough it definitely needs something to make it uh how should i say greener you know what's wrong with just using ammonia nitrate <laughs> well i tell you what what you're uh, lacking is iron the, what makes your grass green is iron so uh you need to get into your local place hardware and they've got a great fertilone product that has iron in it and that's the secret ingredient I did not know that. I'll have to do it. One time, guys, this is a funny story. When I was a kid out on Green Road, we played baseball in our front yard, which is a pretty big front yard. And I came up with this idea. I must have been like eight years old. I realized that ammonia nitrate, which was white, would make some nice baselines because it's colored white. So I put ammonia nitrate down to make baselines in the front yard. And, of course, it burned the hell out of the grass. And we had nice big brown marks all all through our front lawn to look at, and my dad just looked at me and shook his head. <laughs> he had permanent baselines, huh? Yeah, and then from that point on, I knew that landscaping probably was not going to be my field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know ammonia nitrate. Do, like, it was you white. Your wife do like smoky, do you? <laughs> no, no. What's what's that like? I don't know. How is it smoky? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now we know what inspired you to be a lawyer. Man, it, it surely wasn't my uh, skills in the law- yard. Now, what are you guys going to talk about tomorrow on the radio? We've got a lot of good stuff going on, and it's always jam-packed, and we try to give you a shout-out whenever we can. Appreciate uh, that. Yeah, we, we, there's a, one thing that, that all your listeners need to know is we love our dogs, we love our pets, and that Diamond Recall, Diamond Dog Food, not only is it bad for your pets, but it's got the salmonella in it that if you touch it, you can get sick. So wow. the Diamond Dog Food Recall, we just briefly talk about that. But we're, we're always trying to be a uh, public service. Hey, guys, we're losing the line. Say the name of that product again with the, with the salmonella. <laughs> Diamond Dog Food. Diamond Dog Food. Diamond brand dog food. It has salmonella. Salmonella, that's a tough one to say. <laughs> yeah, did he, did he play third base for the Orioles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's got salmonella in it. You can't even hardly touch it. So Get, watch out for diamond dog food. Got, guys, our front line joke was a epic fail today, and then the backup, and then the backup to the backup jokes were fails too. Do you all have a joke that uh, we're trying to get the Bulldog Nation to laugh? It's been a rough morning so far. Do you guys got anything in your uh, memory bank? All you got to do is get on twofatguysradio.com and take a look at picture at Smokey, and you'll just laugh all day long. <laughs> <laughs> to link Sounds to that like Smokey lost the line. He got cut off. He Probably his wife's telling him to do something. Well, uh, Rick, what do you got for us? Your parting words for today to the Bulldog Nation and Ace Hardware fans. Ace Hardware, just get into your Ace Hardware, man. We need you. We love you. Your help. You're the... We got great service. You just got to get in Ace Hardware. It's a good time. All right, thanks, Rick and Smokey. Yeah, the weather's cool. It's a great weekend to get out in. It is a great hardcore. weekend to do that. You know what? I cannot believe. See, I'm going to get in trouble for this. Do you know whose birthday it is? Uh, let's see. Today, other than the two we mentioned. Yeah, let me see. Who? Grant's birthday. Who was the other one we mentioned? Grant, and Casey. Casey, Casey. Casey. I cannot believe. Guess who else's birthday turns one today? My granddaughter Riley. Wait a minute. We today is hold today on. is Riley's one year old birthday. And you didn't I'd it. forgotten about it because her birthday party is like a week from now. <laughs> well, hang on. We well, how do you not have the birthday party on the birthday? I don't. No one can make it. But old Riley, you know, she her birthday today. Also tonight, I'm going to be at the NRA dinner starting at five thirty at receptions in Butler County. The NRA. Sean Maloney is going to show me how to shoot guns. Here's a, you know, this is a backup quote that we had. This is from Steve Jobs. This is awesome. Here's the, this is what I did that commercial on. Here's the crazy ones, 
the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, <laughs> the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. You don't anybody that, like that sums me up, you know buddy. Like that? I am I have been validated <laughs> by Steve Jobs. So the next time the program director and the station manager and the owner complain about things we do, TC, we just say Steve Jobs would have liked us. Yeah, where is he now? Steve Jobs would have liked us. I got something for Riley. All right, here we go. My little Riley. Riley. Riley, Riley. Not not Riley Hunter. <laughs> TC, you want to hear something messed up? That's classic. Yeah, yes. This is no kidding. Somebody took time. This is hilarious. I'm going to share something in my life. Somebody took the time to do a one, two, three page handwritten letter to me. Wow. Now I start reading this letter. And I'm thinking, well, who the heck is writing me this three-page letter? Single space. This is somebody who got fired from their job, and they wrote me a three-page letter to just tell me something that this person who fired them said bad about me. And she feels bad about telling me what this person said, but she felt compelled to write a three-page letter to tell me wow. what this person said about me. I don't even know who the heck she is, but... She just wanted to tell me, and she feels bad for writing the letter, but she felt compelled to write the letter. Now, That's good. How, how messed up do you have to be to write a three-page letter to somebody you don't know, to tell them something bad that somebody said, it's but it's going to make you feel bad? She's got a lot of trauma. <laughs> right now. Is that not hilarious? Well, Is that not crazy? I, I don't know what I'll do. I'm going to get a restraining order against this person. <laughs> but not really. All right, did you hear about the widening scandal? Which, and this is widening scandal. Which widening A spokesman scandal? for the Secret Service says the agency is investigating allegations that the Secret Service employees received favors from strippers at a club in San Salvador. Really? And took prostitutes to their hotel rooms ahead of Obama's visit to the city in March 2011. The Washington Post described a visit to Buenos Aires in 2009 by former President Bill Clinton, whose protective detail it said included agents and uniformed officers that went out for a late night of partying at strip clubs. I can't believe it's happened again. I can't believe it. What did we say when this story first broke? How far back does it go? Uh, the ball of yarn. It's Bill Clinton started. You know, I, I, this has been going on in my administration. It's no big deal. Nobody ever complained. Hey, I only got caught once. The boys always liked it. Kept them happy. Yeah. Long day of work. Need something. <laughs> I'd get the leftovers. Hillary's frigid. Need something. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And how about this, TC? A report shows that 93% of immigrants can pass the test for citizenship compared to only 65% of people who are already Americans. Oh, my. I rest my case. Hell in a handbasket. You know why? Why? Because certain things we take for granted. That's take a good point. Granted. I was born here. I've got a right to be here. Forget everything else. Now, here is a classic. Joe Biden yesterday was speaking to a crowd, and he said, like Teddy Roosevelt said, speak softly and carry a big stick. Biden then said Obama followed the same path with her I Iran, and he leaned forward, and he said, I promise you the president has a big stick. I heard that. Now, 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 TC, here's what's so funny. Everybody laughed. Now, you and I know why everybody laughed. Yes, yes. And the Washington Times on the way in was talking about this story, and they were talking about everybody laughing. Oh, they were yeah. meeting the golf club, and they were laughing. Like These people were laughing at him because they thought it was a stupid statement to make yeah. and that he really wasn't tough on foreign policy. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that's why everybody laughed. He leans over. I promise you, the president has a big stick. <laughs> My gosh. So, Joe Biden, the crazy uncle that just keeps on giving. See, we got to find a cabinet position for him no matter how the election comes out. Yeah, okay? maybe Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney needs to keep him around. <laughs> yeah. When we you know. return, more politics and government on Real Talk 1160. And don't forget, once you get to work, if you can't listen to us on the radio, you can listen live online. Just go to realtalk1160.com and click listen live. So easy, a caveman could do it.
And now, we're going to get in trouble for that. And now, back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Joe Biden, crazy uncle. What can you say? Guess how much Michelle Obama's 2010 trip cost, TC? I don't want to know. $467,585. For a trip? For a trip to Spain. No, wait, 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 wait. One more. Listen to this. It took two years and a lawsuit to get the information. Wow. It two of her friends and four of their daughters. <laughs> now, Let's all go to Spain again. I mean, that is such a crock. Ugh. I want to see some receipts. 33% of the American people have a favorable view of the federal government. That high. 33%. <laughs> Who are those people? George Zimmerman has raised $204,000. His lawyer, Mark O'Mara, is really happy. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Uh, hey, Mark, how much do you think my legal bill is going to be? Uh, about 204000 <laughs> <laughs> It'll go up. It'll go up as we see how the money comes in. Exactly. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. And he's, and he's, he's getting the money online? Is that, is that we put out a thing online for yeah. people to make yep. donations? That yep. is incredible. I mean, how many? Now, how much do you think? I mean, people are giving like. 50 bucks here. Now, I'm bucks. sure some people are giving like a thousand. Wow. You know, some people. Who is giving this? That guy? believe in his cause. Um, okay, earmuffs for the little ones. Earmuffs for the little ones. This is world news. Egyptian husbands. This is messed up, TC. And I'll do it PG. I'm right. good at that. All right. Egyptian husbands will soon be allowed to their dead wives oh. for up to six hours after their death. The controversial new law is part of a raft of measures being introduced by the Islamist-dominated parliament that will also see the minimum age of marriage lowered to 14 <laughs> and the ridding of women's rights of getting education and employment. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, if there's an Islamic expert that says this is some kind of a ritual or something, I'd like to hear about it because that's messed up. <laughs> now, I wonder... If your dead wife is under 17 and you're a teacher, are you still allowed to? <laughs> no. Okay. Not in Kentucky and Ohio. You'll be prosecuted the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> but if your dead wife is an employee of a pizza place and you're the manager. Hey, listen to this. Listen to this. This is a prosecutor. I'm going to get in. Uh, I'm going to get in. Uh, what's it called? Uh, get in. Uh, character. Char I'm going to get in character. I'm a prosecutor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. That woman right there had, mm, with a dead 17-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if you go, like, maybe six hours and 30 minutes? Now, here's, a violation? here's a defense attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, he was hurt. He was dead. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that something about Islamic that they want to their dead wives? I... I I, I don't understand that. I don't get that. I don't get it that. It came at all. from the Daily Mail. So it must be true. It must be, I guess. That is messed up. All right. Let's pretend that would never happen. This from Yahoo News. Get this 40,000 people, according to police, masked in the rain at a square near the courthouse where Andrew Breivik is on trial for his July 22nd attacks that killed 77 people to sing Children of the Rainbow. By Norwegian folk singer Lilleborn Nelson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I'm all for singing and love, but evil needs to be met with force, not a song. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, TC? I agree. I agree. I mean, they don't have the death penalty in Norway, and I don't understand why. They weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting something crazy like that. In legal news, DreamWorks is under investigation by the SEC for bribing Chinese officials. Jeffrey Katzenberg is the largest donor to the Obama re-election super PAC priorities. Katzenberg's on the phone saying, Barack, you better get the SEC off my ass! <laughs> or I'm not going to give you any more money! You want that billion, baby? Isn't that gratitude? For I'll tell you, Barack Obama is amazing. He wants your money, but then he'll have his SEC prosecute you. You know, you do what and, you do, and, and you do for these and, politicians. And, and, and does anybody care that movie studios have to bribe Chinese officials? <laughs> My God, do you, do you expect anything different?
Well, you know. Is our national security at stake when a movie house bribes the Chinese? They're making movies, not selling weapons. Yeah, but see, these could be lead-based movies. Oh, I see. That could be an issue, you know. Okay, Bulldog Nation member Denise says that the dead wife thing is all about power. What? (laughs) That's messed up. I'd rather have money. Okay, in the the John Edwards trial, Andrew Young testified in U.S. District Court that he added a swimming pool, a home theater, and a guest room to his house with with this money. This money that Edwards is accused of keeping. (laughs) He used the money while he was was hiding out in California with Riley Hunter, the mother of Edwards' illegitimate child. This is what he said. He goes, "Uh, we were out in Santa Barbara, and uh, we just lost our perspective. Perspective. Yeah, he's using <laughs> hush money to rebuild his house. And and but he didn't have an elevator for his car. I bet. Oh my gosh. Or did he? Uh, Florida has struck down Governor Rick Scott. Who, by the way, he's in Florida. He needs a tan. Uh, <laughs> this he declared Rick Scott's order requiring drug testing for some eighty-five thousand state workers unconstitutional. But well, I want to ask you something now. Of going back to Andrew Young, because this guy to me sounds like he should be pleading the fifth. Is, oh is this guy going to get in some trouble? No, he got probably? immunity. Oh, okay, okay. He got immunity because he sounds like he was. I mean, he's a dirt bag. They're all dirt bags. Well, they're politicians. Uh, John Boehner is going after Barack Obama. Ooh. He he's going to the. He went to three swing states, spoke at three big universities, and Barack Obama is acting like this was official business. It's a joke. Well, then Boehner said, didn't he say he was pathetic? Pathetic. He called him pathetic. Like, hey. And then I'm sitting there thinking to myself, yeah, they've all done it, John. Not that it's right. It's wrong. Right, right. But he has to single out the president. And then and then Carney goes, well, George Bush back in 2004 took a visit to Ohio to make a speech about education. So, I hate them all. I hate them all. That's all I got to say. They're I hate just them big all. babies. Put them in a playpen. Get this. Nancy Pelosi, our Hall of Fame jack wagoner, <laughs> House Minority Leader says the GOP plan to cut the Obamacare slush fund to pay for student loan interest rate is another attack on women. The GOP is. calls it a slush fund because there are very few limits on how the funds are spent. How do you like that? We have a we've got a guest that has entered the studio, which we will introduce after the break. All right, we'll do that. And we've got we have uh, it's a Mark. mystery guest. So if you're listening, no. aren't you wondering exactly. who it is? Who walked in the studio? Is it a male? Is it a female? Is she tall? Is he short? Who is it? <laughs> is she green? Is she green? You got a green? You got any green water? Funny By the way, Bob Aurora sent me a green water bit in Latin. I mean, in uh, Hispanic. I'm not really? going to speak Hispanic. I can't speak Hispanic. <laughs> This is some guy with a microphone reminding you if you plan on going fishing this weekend, be sure to stop by your local Queen Kick and stock up on plenty of great tasting slimy living green water. Then when you get to your favorite fishing hole, just pour a bottle of green water right in that crystal clear lake. Grab your net and scoop up the fish when they float to the top. You'll have more fish than you can handle, but I wouldn't recommend eating them. Great tasting slimy living green water available at Queen Kick. I'm going fishing this weekend. That is funny. Now I'm going to go fishing. Man, I tell you, green water is so versatile. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a nice way to put it. It's almost like Bulldogs Grease Away. No kidding. My son, you know that, that incident where I had my mud all over my truck in the median and my boots were full of mud? Yeah. My son used, I said, hey, take that Bulldogs Grease Away and clean my boots. Because my boots were all muddy. Yeah. That's what you can tell. Son, clean my boots. Sure thing, Dad. He cleaned them right up. Did he? Bulldogs grease away cleans mud off boots. That's a good Oh, here thing. we're, we're going to Tom Jones all you ladies this morning to make up for those bad jokes. <laughs> on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Joining us in the studio is Molly from the office. Molly, you got to get right up on the microphone to speak. Was the traffic bad on the way in? It was a little rough. You know, if you come in here and get here at 7 a.m., it's usually not as bad. Um, Molly, are you ready for the Feel Good song? I'm really excited about it. Now, what's your favorite song of all time? Into the Mystic by Van Morrison. Well, maybe T.C. could find that. But until then, T.C. and I have a little bit of a dispute here. Yeah, about that Feel Good song. I have been Joan Jetting all week. Do you want to touch? And then we played Crimson and Clover. Oh. And now I want to play I Love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett. And Which he's saying... It's a great song, however. 
Go ahead. However. Make your now, case. Make your case. Let me explain how my Wednesday afternoon went, okay? I walked into a <laughs> coffee shop to have lunch with a pretty young lady. We walked in. Do you want to touch what's playing on the jukebox, <laughs> coincidentally? Oh, my goodness. And that reminded me. And that's why I told her, I said, oh, my gosh, that was our feel-good song. And that was the feel-good song Wednesday. Jukeboxes pick up our radio signal and copy what we do here. I know. They, they, they've got the tune-in radio app, I think is what it is. So, anyway, I was telling her about the feel-good song. She goes, well, you guys ought to play Blondie one way or another. Now, I thought, if you listen to the words, maybe that's a sign she's given me. I think so it was. I texted you yesterday or Wednesday. We got to play that song. You said, okay. Then the next day you came in, Joan Jet. I'm like, wait But we did minute. play Blondie because we violate our own rules. We have more than one feel-good song. Why, why have rules if you can't break them? So. Okay, we're going to have a feel-good song contest here. Yes. All right. On Friday. Which one's first? Now, don't worry, folks. We're going to cover the rest of politics. We'll play Joan Jet first. All right. All right. This is your Don't you love that mascara? Oh. Joan Jet, the trifecta. The sun is shining. God's in his heaven. Roll down the windows. Crank it up to 11. I made that up. He used to be a DJ, man. <laughs> Saw him dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I can't have that. Oh, you're trying to get this court case, aren't you? I see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Uh -huh. I didn't know this song said 17. <laughs> Sir, who? I don't know anybody named Sarah. <laughs> Is she saying mate? Yeah. Oh, may. May. Uh, may. 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 <laughs> may. I, she I, may? I, me? May? I don't know. What do I know? May. 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 April and June. Typical man. <laughs> With me? Me. Me. Me? Me? Me. 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 All right, that's Joan Jett. Yeah, that was pretty good, though. All right. That's a, that's a feel good. That gets you going right there. That does get you feel going. Now, I just want you to know, I, I admire Pat Benatar. Yeah. But she's a Joan Jet one to be. Ooh, well, I don't know about that. Now this was the feel good song going to school in high school. Well, let me tell you. I actually bought both these albums. <laughs> me too. Long history. Believe me, the president's history is pretty long. <laughs> Jeez, it's a little aggressive here. Where are these kind of women? That's not Joan Jett, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Nah. I like it, but it's not Joan Jett. Brad Amster, Joan Jett, or I Pat like Benatar? Her. I like Joan Jett, but I do love Pat Benatar. Molly, I know this music. You're not. You're 30. This is this is too old music for you. But Joan Jett or Pat Benatar? And oh. the fact that you work for me, do not let that influence <laughs> your vote whatsoever. <laughs> Or your future race. No, no. I, I love this music. Definitely Joan Jett, though. All right. All right. Maybe we, need, something something. we need to... We'll let somebody else determine. 513-579-1160. At least we got to hear them both. 513-57... Okay? They were both fine choices. Maybe you need yeah. something a little harder rock, a lady a little... That hey, hey, a little hey, hey, rock. hey, 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 hey. Hey, let's, let's do one more. This will be the fifth Joan Jett song we've played this week. Uh -oh. Find Joan Jett's version of The Runaways. She was in The Runaways, and she did Cherry Bomb herself. And that was the big runaways hit, that lead singer that quit, Cherry Bomb. And we'll play this for Nate Webster, Ooh. the former Cincinnati Bengals football player. we got to find Joan. <laughs> you like that? Uh, folks, let me tell you something here. This is hilarious. Former President Jimmy Carter says that he expects Obama to win, but he's very comfortable with Mitt Romney being president. He's proven competence and is a good, solid family man. Mitt Romney has been endorsed by Jimmy Carter. He's done. <laughs> I mean, he's done. How about this, folks? I'm a farm boy. You got, the, you got it ready? Yes. yes. All right. This is the fifth Joan Jett. Now, I want to let you know, we will move past old-time hockey and Joan Jett next week. <laughs> but here is, this is for Nate Webster. Ugh. 
This is the Runaways version. Joan Jett on guitar. Great drums. <laughs> Cherry walked all the way. She walked away from it all, TC. Can't believe it. She walked away from it all. A great tune. Great movie. Did you see the movie? No, I did the not. The Runaways? Mm-hmm. It's good. It's a good movie in it, Yeah, Molly. I like it. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's on my to-do list. It's a good movie. I got a long movie list. I see them all. I think plays. Ladies and gentlemen of the American Jury, you know our theme song. And this has been our th- Let's go over our themes for this week. Hell in a Handbasket. Joan Jett and old time hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now to just prove hell in a handbasket, why we need more Joan Jett <laughs> is right here. And old, more old time hockey is this. The Labor Department was proposing rules. Now, remember, guys, once the Congress passes Bulldog Nation, once Congress passes a law, these departments can just pass all the regulations they wanted. They were going to ban younger children, younger than 16, from using power-driven farm equipment, including tractors. Folks, I started driving a tractor when I was eight. The rules would have prevented younger than 18 from working in feedlots, grain bins, and stockyards. I mean, it was an incredible, and they finally backed up. And Obama said, "Okay, we'll back off those regulations." I mean, I mean that's the problem. I mean, they are trying to prevent farm boys and farm girls from working on neighboring farms and whatnot. I mean, I'm telling you, hell in a handbasket, old time hockey, Joan Jet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh, we got Dan from Piner. Dan and Piner, you're on Real Talk 1160. Do you have a a comment to make about Benatar or Jet? Hey, they're both great songs, but I gotta go with Joan Jett. I agree with you. I like All that. Right. I like the drums in Joan Jett songs, like "I Hate Myself for Loving You" and yeah. "Do You Want to Touch." Yep. All right. Well, Dan, thanks for weighing in on that. I appreciate that. You know what? The bottom line is, TC. It looks like you're overwhelmingly defeated with your Pat Benatar submission. Well, okay. You know, I, I guess that's what you would call it then. And I would submit to Pat Benatar. Thank you very much. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I love Joan Jett. I know you do. I do love Joan Jett. I just got to think about that Pat Benatar song. And, and I right. and I understand the whole thing with Blondie because your woman likes Blondie. Well, that's and, a, my friend. Is, you know, she just suggested it. Now, now my wife requested a song. That we're gonna have to play sometime. It's called uh, what's it? What's it? Breathe something. Breathe by Pearl Jam. Oh yeah, you can find that. All right. All right. Well, I want to do a little self promotion here for the radio station, Real Talk eleven sixty. Remember, you can listen to me from seven to nine every day, Monday through Friday, and then following me as Laura Ingram in her radio addiction, and then from noon to three we have the Savage Nation, Savage, Savage. and then we also have Mike Huckabee. From 3 to 5. I like Mike. And then after that, we have Wildman Walker, Rick the Brick, Jeff Picard, and the gang in Real Sports. Great lineup Monday through Friday. And, of course, Saturday, we have Denny McEwen on Saturday morning. The two fat guys want to plug them. We have a great – is Catherine Raker still on? Uh, she's on hiatus. She's on hiatus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, every dog has their day. I hope today is yours. That's our motto. You can check me out, Bull Law, on Twitter. That's three L's, not two L's, three L's. Also, you can check – TC, you got a Facebook? No, I told you I'm afraid of Facebook. All right. You, I like the Facebook. You can be my Facebook friend on Eric Dieter's also Real Talk 1160. He has a Facebook page. I write every week for the Highland County Press and the Journal News. Pick up a copy today. Also, you can check out realtalk1160.com, which you can listen to us live streaming and also from your iPhone. Also, thebulldognation.com. Also, you can sign up for my weekly daily newsletter. Just email me at eric at ericdieters.com. We got it in there, didn't we? We got it all in there. Yeah. When we come back, more radio superbity. And I think I'm going to do a rant. Yes, it's been overdue. A bulldog rant. And my morning voice on Real Talk 1160. Tomorrow afternoon, we've got baseball. It's UC Baseball with Steve Jarnicky calling the game. They're going to take on Rutgers 330 pregame. Then the first pitch at 4 o'clock right here on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Uh... A Bulldog Nation member sent me a text, and he's very, very wise, very wise. Made a comment that the person that could take on Joan Jett, that would have the ability to maybe compete with Joan Jett, is uh, Hart. 
Barracuda. I could go for that. I could see a little competition Absolutely there. there, man. Yeah, that'd be nice. That is good stuff. Girls with guitars. Who did you say was on the line? Yeah, the prankster. Uh, we like the prankster. By the way, if you want to comment about Joan Jett or Pat Benatar or Joe Biden, you know, Joe Biden <laughs> is talking about the president having a big stick. I think it's inappropriate to be talking about publicly. Yeah. Let's go to prankster. <laughs> prankster, you're on Real Talk 1160. Bulldog, I really like you, but I believe you're wrong. Uh oh. I, I I think you're a very good about Joe Biden. You're a very good entertainer. Thank you. Uh, uh, very funny. That's why they pay me the big bucks around here. But six I figures. I do not think that Jimmy Carter endorsed Romney. <laughs> no, he didn't. He just said he could live with him. Well, uh, I mean, not like figuratively. I believe that uh, President Obama will be president again. No. And I, I think that the bulldog. No, 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 the, the, the bull, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. The bulldog will, you know, see the gas prices probably go down around the time of the election, maybe three dollars a gallon or something like that, and then they'll go back up higher than ever. You know that bulldog. So it's gonna uh, be a gas price manipulation election, is what you're telling me? Yeah, I, like old time hockey. I, I, I just think it's gonna <laughs> happen. Inverse. The They're gonna. You mean to tell me Barack Obama's gonna old time hockey us? Uh, I could believe it would happen puke on old-time gas prices i'm on a high stick so your guest, high stick your guest there works for you what does your guest do for you um she is in charge of sales for bulldog stuff uh i have a like question. bulldogs waste management uh -huh. bulldog social media and all those kind of things i have a question for you bulldog i have all the answers does the school teacher still work for you Yes. I thought so, because I was arguing with my friend, and I said she still does. You know, Nicole Howe couldn't find a job after she lost her job, so she came to work for me. I and know. then and then Sarah, you know, she you know she she can't get a job, so she's working for me as well, and uh, she's doing an outstanding job. That's a very good Christian thing for you to do, Bulldog. You're darn right. You're you're a Christian saint. But I'm a sinner, not a saint. Yeah. Well, but even you, sinners do good things every once trying, in a while. You're trying to be a good Christian, Bulldog. Trying to redeem Have for all my day, sins. Bulldog. Thanks, prankster. <laughs> that was a nice conversation we had. That was. He's a little mellow today. I you're think he's mellow. switched to decaf. But you know what? He might be right. What if Obama manipulates things you know, to want, try to win re-election? I wanted to ask him <laughs> if he thought that the Tea Partiers were going to support uh, Mitt or if they're going to kind of split the vote there. Split nah, the they're on. Come on. It's going to be so easy. Uh, Mitt, Romney, <laughs> Barack Obama. They're going to say, ah, we'll vote for You know what counts is those middle votes. I mean, 45% yeah. of, of America is going to vote for Barack Obama, hell or high water. They could catch him in bed with a live animal or a dead baby. <laughs> it's not going to make any difference. Barack Obama is going to win re-election. And the same thing with uh, Mitt Romney. I mean, excuse me, he's going to get 45% of the vote. And Mitt Romney's going to get 45% of the vote, even if he finds out that he was a polygamist. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. 45%, 45%. It's that 10% yeah. that's on the table. Yeah, I, okay, and I can I knew my politics. Yes, I believe that you do there. Go ahead. So I was just going to say, so those are the swing voters, and you think that those are going to be the Tea Partiers that are going to... Don't, 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 don't uh, uh, insult these voters. They don't swing. <laughs> <laughs> They're just good, independent-thinking Americans, TC. That doesn't make them swingers. Oh, God love them, too. By the way, it's so nice to have a, a group of... It's so, so nice, nice to, to be, be with you. you. Man, oh, we're man. thinking oh. like, oh, my God. <laughs> Go ahead, TC. I was going to say, we, it's the, the Tea Party is kind of like the, the voter watchdog group, you know? Yes. And I, I like that. And I like that. that. Yeah, I do. I really do because they're watching everybody. They are. They're watching everybody. And, and I'll tell you what's interesting, and I, I would, you can go all the way back to the 30s and 40s. The American public have been sheep. Congress did what they wanted with the pork. Nobody's really paying attention. In this day and age, with the Internet, it's the computer, it's the Internet, with the access to information and the yeah. ability to communicate the information, for the first time in our history, the American voters can are engaged with what the heck's going on and watching every move that these jack wagons make. And in fact, to prove it, how do you how do you explain, TC, over fifty members of Congress, Senate and the House are retiring this year? You know why? The fun's over. Yeah. It's not fun anymore. You go up there, gravy train, get your money. Yeah. But now you're being watched. Now fifty people don't walk away from that. 
unless it's not fun anymore. Right, right. You something's know, changing. Something's changing. It's like, well, man, we, you know, we can't give away all this money anymore, man. Why should I even be? You know, this isn't fun. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and can you imagine what it must be like? Like, uh, I talked to Larry Forge. I said, you know, a lot of people wanted me to run for Congress from the 4th District. And I said, I have no desire whatsoever. I wouldn't want to give up my radio gig. And he goes, <laughs> Eric Dieters, you don't want to do that. You're one of 435. You have no power, and it's boring. <laughs> wow. You would be so bored up there. And, you know, I thought about that. You know, you're one of 435 people. Yeah. Hey. You'll never be the superstar there. Yeah, unless you're on the, you know, the committees of, you know, like – the seniority, like John Boehner. Right. Yeah. I guess if I went and genuflected six times in front of John Boehner, then laid prostate out in front of his office, <laughs> he might say, okay, we'll give the kid a committee. <laughs> Let me absorb that one. I've got to get this image in my head. You know, when you become a priest, you're ordained. You lay with your arms ahead, of, you know, just lay straight out, flat down. I thought if I did that outside of Boehner's office, he might come around. He'd cry. He'd just cry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. What, what are we doing? Look at this. <laughs> not, not like yesterday. I was very proud of John Boehner because he criticized the president's traveling schedule without crying. You know, he just called it pathetic. He didn't say, yeah, I can't believe he went to speak to them universities. Man, there's a lot of tension in Washington now. There is a tension. A lot of tension in Washington. A lot of tension. Um, but you know what? There deserves to be the tension because, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury... When you look at what our country is doing and, and how the, the, the political picture and everything going, I mean, like, just think about it, folks. The Labor Department wanted to basically regulate the hell out of farm boys and farm girls from working on farms. I mean, is that, is that where America, that, that is so symbolic of the regulation problem and the go, too much government problem in this country. I mean, maybe they've backed off of it. But it doesn't make any difference. The fact that they were thinking about doing this anyway, what it was going to prohibit is me, if I'm 14 years old, going to work over my Uncle Johnny's farm next door. I couldn't do that. Well, don't get on that tractor. No, it's I mean, a safety issue? Oh, uh, yeah, but it's farm life. It's the way it's always been. Have we not done pretty well as a country for the last 200 years? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. And guess what? Teenagers were driving tractors in Nebraska and in Iowa and North Dakota and South Dakota. I mean, but it's it's so symbolic of the mentality. And then, like, this latest discussion has been going on, like, budgets don't matter. You actually have Democrats in Washington saying budgets don't matter. Well, if budgets don't matter, then why do any of us pay any taxes? Because who cares? Right. Who cares? No, budgets don't <laughs> matter, and budget deficits don't matter. Who cares? I mean, it is the most stupid, and that's the mentality of these people. And 45% of America will follow them. We have Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian and her family just signed a contract for like $40 million right. for a reality television show. I've watched the show one time out of curiosity, Watch. and I'm like, boring. Yeah. Boring. They don't do anything. They don't, you know, they don't have any talents. They don't. I mean, it's I incredible. Know. And, and $40 million. Now, why? Because Americans are watching that. So, I mean, so who are the Americans that watch the Kardashians and Jersey Shore every week? When I'm, I'm, I'm in negotiations with the Attorney Reality Show, uh -huh. and I just chewed out this guy that was talking about storyboards and stuff, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. It's going to be straight up real. <laughs> no storyboards. He goes, well, Jersey Shore and all the storyboards. They need storyboards because it's boring. <laughs> My real life doesn't need a storyboard. They ought to get C-SPAN a $40 million deal so that people would watch that, you know? I'm telling you right now, my attorney reality show will beat the Kardashians and Jersey Shore. You watch. Ooh, yeah. I'm throwing down on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Two bit. I checked out the top 100 songs of all time. <laughs> And rock and roll. Thunderstruck made the list. Yeah. You couldn't believe who else made the list. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, Some no. of these big hair bands like made the top 100 songs. Oh, oh my it? good. Bruce, St Bruce Springsteen made a one, Born to Run. 
That's it. Really? That's it. That is his classic, though. I know, but still, though. I mean, some of these people that made it were like, are you kidding me? Top one. Guess what? The Beatles' Helter Skelter was in the top ten. Huh. The, Beatles, the Beatles. You think of, you think of Helter Skelter when you think of the Beatles, don't you? <laughs> so does Charlie. It was in the top ten. Well, that's a great song, though. Yeah. Do you know? Stairway to Heaven was that's number two song. on this list. Was it and really? Bohemian Rhapsody of Queen was first. Really? Mitch Miller. No. I will not let you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles' Helter Skelter, that song is 25 minutes long. They edited out 21 minutes and put the wow. four minutes on the, on the record. Really? At, at the end where um, Ringo says, I got blisters on my finger. He's been playing for 25 minutes. That's why. He wasn't joking. Helter Skelter, though, top 10. Man. Plus, I bet you they don't. that's not on their playlist anywhere in light of uh, – Everything that happened with Helter Skelter. Yeah, it's still mm. great. Too. Is there a radio station that plays that on their playlist? I'll tell you one that might play it sometime. It's a feel good song. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we will not. <laughs> you know, what we ought to have feel good song, Helter Skelter. That's messed up, <laughs> I'm not man. Feeling too good right about now. <laughs> Is it okay to say feel good and death in the same sentence? Because we could have the Real Talk 1160 feel good death match every Friday. Ooh. We have to come up with a different oh, word than death on. match, but I like the idea. <laughs> We sparked some interest there, didn't we? I know you're such a huge Michael Jackson fan, and I love Donny Osmond. So where are you guys going? <laughs> hey, come back. That's a joke. Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond. <laughs> Molly, do you like Donny Osmond? Donny who? I don't know who that is. <laughs> I take Marie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't I like her either. Donnie. She's a plastic woman. Plastic Pete's woman. looking at Donny. She's all right now. She went to see Jenny Craig. She looks great now since she's seen Jenny. She's seen Jenny. Molly, let's ask Molly. Yeah. Molly, get up to the microphone. You got to get right up on the microphone. Sorry. Molly, what year were you born? Um, 81. Shouldn't ask. In 81. God, that's the year I would have graduated from high school. Wow. It's a while ago, wasn't it? Not that long ago. So let me see. <laughs> yeah. 80s music. So, so I guess your music would have been the 90s when you were a teenager. I, I've always listened to old stuff because my generation of music wasn't that amazing. You know what? I was the same way. I always listened to like the 60s music. That was really before my time, you know. I like yeah. I like uh, the Doors and yeah. Jimi Hendrix and the Kinks and the Who. Yeah, the who. it was good groups. Years ago, I had a chance to do an oldie show for a couple of years. Um, Saturday Night Solid Gold. It was great. So that's when I learned a lot of those '60s songs. Saturday Night Solid Gold. It was a great show with Casey Kasem and T.C. Summers. Dayton's number one live request oldie show. It used to be T.C. Just when you thought everything was going to be good, summer air fares are going up. Again? Again. The two remaining airlines are raising their prices? <laughs> I mean, it just keeps getting better and better. But the economy's improving. Uh, <laughs> spending is being sluggish. I mean, the, yeah. the, the consumer debt has fallen, but spending is sluggish. I mean, it just gets good. Uh, but Chrysler earnings increased by 300%. Did they really? It was all because of that Clint commercial. Halftime. People baby. watched that halftime in America, and they said, We want to win the second half, man. We want to win the second half. We're going to go buy a Chrysler car. But instead, what people are going to do is they're going to go to Ace Hardware. They're going to get that Weber grill, and then they're going to go home and have a stay vacation, a staycation, or whatever it's called. TC, I just know this, and this is just as simple as I know. When you look at the uh, the federal government and you know the, the idea that we're at almost at $16 trillion. Cha-ching. And it's going to keep on going and how Barack Obama and the Democrats want to stay on the same course that they're on, I find absolutely incredible. And you know, the worst part about it is they're not affected by it. They've got cash. Right. They're not affected by whatever happens with the economy. You're, you're right, because they have the money. I thought of this. Somebody mentioned this on the, on the radio or television, and, and I said, man, that's a, that's a good point. And the point is, is this. You know, the Democrats act like... They're worried about everybody. You know, we're worried about the war on women that the Republicans have waged. And, you know, we're worried about our children and we're worried about the poor and we're worried about the little kids and we're worried about the unemployed. And they act like they're the party of the heart and, the you know, that they really care. I got to ask all of them this question. And this is I, this is original thought. At least I think it's original. I would love to ask Barack Obama, Harry Reid. Nancy Pelosi and all the rest of them, Joe Biden, Uncle Joe, I would like to say, what is um, right and what is moral about you adopting and uh, perpetrating policies and wanting to keep those policies going that are enslaving, enslaving the next generation in debt? You know, I, I think I think there's nothing worse than you can do 
to the young people that they claim that they're looking out for on student loans. By the way, they created, this is hilarious, everybody agreed, Republicans and Democrats agreed that interest rates should not go up on student loans. And Barack Obama went around the country like fighting, like like picking a fight. There wasn't a fight. It's a, it was hysterical. It's like, hey, duh, guess what? Everybody doesn't want the interest rates to go up on student loans, including us taxpayers. But anyway, if you really care, if you really care about the young people, then wouldn't you say to them, say to them, what can we do to make sure that you've got jobs, and what can we do to make sure that, uh, hello, uh, you're not going to be in debt. And you've got to pay our debt for us. Listen, think about that. Everybody living high on the hog today on the backs of the children of tomorrow. I mean, that's, that's immoral. I mean, that's plain, downright immoral. And if I'm a young person, I'd be like, hey, you know, this is... And, and how, do, how do people, of course, it's just what's in it for me, the selfishness of America. I don't care about the kids of the future paying this debt. I just want my check, and I want my check now. And I told that story earlier in the week, a couple days ago, about Dennis Carter. If you missed it, here's the story. I got a phone call from my cousin Josh, who had a, a guy that he worked with whose father uh, was in a severe accident that he lost his leg. And I went over to University Hospital and I'm talking to this guy. And he just lost his leg. He's over 60 years old and he lost his leg. And he's talking about getting back to work. And now he wants to get back to work. And that Americans shouldn't, it makes me mad that when people get money for nothing. And then I find out he won the Silver Star and the Purple Heart in Vietnam when his tank got blown up, and he lost, according to him, half his butt, and he got everybody out of the tank because they were knocked out. So he saves his crew, he loses half his butt, comes back here, becomes a truck driver, 35 years, no wrecks, no tickets, perfect record, and then due to the negligence of somebody else, he loses his leg, and he's sitting there in good spirits wanting to get back to work and I'm sitting here thinking, huh, where we need more Dennis Carters. <laughs> this this is what America is, Dennis Carter. I mean, I'm not kidding. I almost got choked up just talking to him. I mean, I mean, it was incredible. I left the hospital thinking, man, that's a great American. That's a great human being there. That's that's the American spirit. And I told him, I said, you know how many people would lose a leg in the rest of their life, use that as an excuse to get that government check and not do a darn thing? You know? But not Dennis Carter. Man, oh man, oh man. And that's what we need in America. Not the freeloaders. And we're not talking about... You know oh, it cracks me up. They try to spin it. They say, well, you know, those people are... We're not talking about people that are genuinely, genuinely... You know, you know if you're 85 years old and you've worked a good long... Come on, we're not going to take your Social Security check away from... You know what I'm right. talking about? Right. You've earned it. You've paid into the system. You've worked for it. I mean, I've got clients. i got clients. And I always use this one as, a, as an example. She's bipolar. She takes her lithium. She's fine. She's been collecting a government check for over 10 years for disability. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. She sits at home every day doing nothing, getting an, a, a taxpayer check while we all go to work. She takes her lithium. She's fine. There's no reason in the world why she couldn't work a job. It's incredible. John in Brookville, you're on Real Talk 1160. Hey, Bulldog, uh, I've been thinking lately, and uh, it's the first time in my life that ever occurred to me that uh, I think the real terrorists in this country are in Washington, D.C. And, uh, and I mean, look up the definition, would you? There's nothing worse than what they do to people. I mean, you can't even go through your day without worrying about what these people are doing to you. I know. I know. I for the life of me, I don't know why. If a politician really wanted to fix college, why don't they make it like high school? Why should it cost a hundred thousand dollars? Right, right. I don't know. Somebody's going to have to explain that one. Well, John, you're right. You know, it's almost kind of like they sit in a room all day figuring out how they can make our life more difficult, our lives more miserable. It's just it makes no. It's like we read that Fortune magazine on Monday of the section from the tax code about wine. To make the yeah. point about how complicated the tax code is. Right. I'm right. a lawyer. I didn't understand what I read. <laughs> <laughs> Completely lost. Felt like I was in high school. Again. You were going to make a comment, though? No, he was talking about the terrorists. Did you catch a thing on America's Morning News where, you know, it's, we're coming up on the anniversary of, of bin Laden's death, and, our, and they're saying, well, there's really no more uh, terrorist threat with uh, the anniversary coming up. And I'm thinking, 
Are you serious? If, if Rumsfeld were in there, it's orange, it's blue, it's hot pink. You know, You're right. alert. Oh, how, how funny was that that we had different colors? I mean, who understood green? Oh, what do you mean green? Uh, duct tape the house. Speaking of green, we come back. I got a show and tell that I'm wearing on the top of my head that's green. Ooh. On Real Talk 1160. It ain't water. And remember, if you happen to miss any part of your daily dose of radio superbity this morning... Sucks to be you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Bulldog's got you covered. Bulldog Nation podcasts are up on realtalk1160.com. And now, back to the Bulldog. Eric Gators, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. We are the only show, radio show in the tri-state, that you can watch a video cast every day. Not just podcast, video cast. How do you like that? Yeah. Do it on your tune-in radio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, uh, my wife tolerates a lot. Uh, I'm probably going to get in trouble that Molly's in the studio, <laughs> if, unless she's not listening or somebody tells her, but oh well. I'd like to do a reenactment before but we But she do met a... you the other day. Yes. <laughs> and she was fine with you, so she she knows who she is. I think she worries more about the women she doesn't know, like, who's that in your studio? <laughs> Would you like to hear a reenactment? Yes. Hi, ma'am. Welcome to the drugstore. What can I help you with? Do you have black toenail polish? Right over here, ma'am. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. We'll see. This might save you. Yes. She asked for a feel-good song. She said, you ought to use this for a feel-good song. And this is a low-key, not Joan Jett, but a beautiful song by Pearl Jam. And you understand, when a woman wants to hear a feel-good song, you have to get it on for them. Just like Brandy? Exactly. We did this. This is a beautiful song. Mm-hmm. Molly, is it, you, th- you like this song? Yes. Oh, I love it. Daryl Hall would beat him up, though. (laughs) Beautiful. How many do you have, TC? Brandy. (laughs) <laughs> She's a friend. Your daughter? She's a good girl. Both of them. I like the way they put that on the video, the words, oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that in the dictionary? O O O O H. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury I'm wearing, you can see it on the video cast. My green Harlan County High School hat. About 15, 20 years ago, I went to Harlan County with my mama, her home county, and we she showed me where she grew up. And I stopped and I bought a Harlan County High School Green Dragons hat. And I still have it. It's my longest hat. It's my good luck hat. When I played flag football, I wore it with the it turned around. Sometimes they wouldn't let you wear it when you got in tournaments. Old-fashioned flag football? Old-fashioned flag football. <laughs> but anyway, it is my good luck hat. And when I wear this hat, good things happen. I ought to wear it all the time. The Harlan County High School Green Dragons, who are, who actually are now buying green water for all their athletes. <laughs> you know something good it was that a could perfect, happen? It was a perfect fit. It was. Here's something good that could happen. We could all get out of here before the program director gets to work. <laughs> it's a safe thing for us today. <laughs> Do you think we're in trouble? Uh, I don't know if we're in trouble. I think we're quite entertaining, although we took a few liberties. <laughs> <laughs> I still like that old-time hockey thing. You're allowed to use that P word. Are we? That's a P word that's allowed. It is? I didn't know that. Can we share with the ladies and gentlemen the American jury one final time... <laughs> Old-time hockey, and we promised not to mention it last week. You're probably tired of hearing it. But we have to do old-time hockey one more time. It's what America needs, folks. Old-time hockey. Joan Jett. We need more Joan Jett in the world. Old-time hockey! <laughs> Eddie Shore? <laughs> All right, we got to get rid of Pure Jam. <laughs> We can't afford to play any more Pearl Jam. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know those guys who've made a living playing the Hanson Brothers? I, I, there's a website called thehansonbrothers.com. Really? I went to it. You can get merchandise and everything. One guy was named Hanson. The other two were named Carlson. Their, their real names were Carlson. One guy's real name was Hanson. And, they're the and Hansen. Steve Carlson, they're the Hanson brothers. <laughs> not to be confused with that super group Hanson. <laughs> no, not the super group oh. Hanson. <laughs> Why am I hearing a noise? What, what's ticking? Is something going off around here somewhere? Is it a cricket? I don't know what it is. Grasshopper? Uh, something's going on. There is somebody's laughing. I hear it. I hear it. I can't figure out where it's coming from. <laughs> Something's on over here. Well, you're the producer. You got to figure it out. All this science, I don't understand. I can tell right now. I look at those switchboards or whatever they are that you work at. I'm like, how does anybody know how to work this thing? Is, do they learn that in school? Yes, they teach that at the Ohio Center for Broadcasting, two seven one sixty sixty. What courses do you teach there, TC? I teach news writing, uh, commercial writing, and you know, commercial production, putting together the, the commercials and stuff like that. Um, then they do what they call station days. Now, these are pretty cool. Where they actually simulate, looks like, like they're doing a morning show. And it's not as easy as you think, and you, those students will tell you. But, you know, they get their music together. They get whether feel-good songs or their little bits, whatever they're going to put together. And then they go for two, three, four hours, just like they're doing a regular, um, run a re- regular radio station. It's pretty cool. That is neat. You know, Chuck just sent me a message. It's a pretty good idea. Because I'm from Harlan County originally. And I'm wearing a Harlan County hat that the FX show, Justified, should have me guest star in there. Wearing the hat. And I could play Raylan's sidekick. Like, I just want to be able to draw a gun out and shoot somebody. <laughs> like he gets to all the time. Do Wouldn't it be great walk. to be a, a U.S. Marshal wearing a cowboy hat and boots in Harlan County? <laughs> draw! <laughs> just like the good old days. Draw! Do the moonwalk. <laughs> Do the moonwalk. Well, now see, that's a guy. Here's why. I'm sorry, okay? That's the guy who would show up for the armed march on Washington. The guy wanting everybody to do the moonwalk. So you're saying that the armed march was an ill-conceived idea. Well, when you got guys like out there, I, I, I think Only 20 a, people were willing to go anyway. Yeah. 21 if you count this guy, but he's got to go to court. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I hope you've enjoyed our radio superbity this week, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I think the weather's supposed to be good, except Saturday there could be some thunderstorms. There's some new movies that are coming out. Uh, I think uh, Jason Statham's got a movie coming out, Safe. Um, but there's some good movies, and there's always something to do in Cincinnati. Uh, TC, do you have plans for Cincinnati this weekend? Uh, I don't think so. Just going to kind of take it, maybe do some work around the house. Nothing it's, major. You can go to the zoo and see the new baby camel, like Riley did. <laughs> Is yeah, Kings Island open now? Uh, oh, Kings Island's oh, got to be know, open. There's a, they're, yeah, they're a 40th anniversary. That's right. we got to go to Kings Island. The Can we go to Kings 40. Island together, TC? You and me, let's all go to, to Kings Island. <laughs> yeah. we'll invite all everybody, Bulldog Nation, come to Kings Island. The happy 40th Molly birthday. Molly and Brad, you want to go to Kings Island? Let's do yeah. it. We'll ride the race. I haven't we'll been ride to the Kings beast. Island forever. We'll When's the last time you've been to Kings Island? Drop zone, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. I want to ride the, I want to ride the racer backwards. <laughs> hey, can we do one last thing for the Secret Service? Absolutely. Just this one last time. Absolutely. Like time hockey. Games. Secret Service agents have a hard job memorizing all those presidential candidates' nicknames, except for that Huntsman guy, traveling to exotic places like Columbia, and occasionally keeping an eye on the president. After a long day, these guys want to cut loose, getting down in the hotel room with prostitutes and drinking lots of great-tasting, slimy, living green water. But if you're an agent on a mission, bring plenty of cash, because in Colombia, where prostitution is legal and green water isn't, they don't take American excess. Remember, there are two ways to make a hormone. Don't pay her or give her green water. Great-tasting, slimy, living green water. It's everywhere you shouldn't be. Green water available at Queen Cake. See what happens when I don't get a good night's sleep? You got Molly laughing. <laughs> I forgot we had a woman in there. Uh-oh. Oh, it's good. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yes. I'm going to try and get some sleep this weekend so we can avoid that kind of stuff next week. Man, I, yeah, that's my new favorite. Is it? And I, it's funny because I just happened to watch Mission Impossible. Speed? Three, finally. It's called Ghost Protocol. And don't forget to go up to Esquire and watch Coriolanus. I got to see. Maybe that's what I'll do this weekend. That is a great movie. Yeah. Modern Adepta. Okay. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. I hope today and tomorrow is yours. My day is going to be great. God bless you and have a great weekend, Bulldog Nation. You know I love you on Real Talk 1160.